The classic Mini Moog bass is one of the most pleasant synth sounds to me, both for playing and listening, and at the same time it's quite easy to create inside Ableton Live, which is what I want to show you in this video. As a synth we're going to use analog because it sounds pretty analog as the name suggests and also to me when I try to create those classic synth sounds I always end up using analog from the Ableton stock synths because it just sounds the closest to them. And we need one oscillator that just stays the way it is like sawtooth wave and no changes to the settings. Then the second one needs to be one octave higher and slightly detuned, so maybe at like 0.09. And also for the first oscillator we're going to add some sub oscillators, so you have to click on the first one, then here you see this sub sync menu and you can just increase the level of the sub. Before we go to the most charismatic part of the sound, which is the filter, we have to change some settings at the amplitude envelope because I want to put the sustain at 100%. This leaves us more space for controlling the sound entirely with a filter envelope, which just feels more musical to me with the sound. And also good to know is that with this value here, you can set the velocity reaction. So if it's at zero, all your notes, no matter how loud you play, will always be at the same volume, compared to a more sensitive setting. I also like to change the amplitude envelope setting to legato because I just figured out it gives me sometimes a smoother playing experience. And I'll speak about the release in a second because first we have to take a look at the filter. At this point I find it super helpful to change over to some instrument rack because this way we can treat the values way more musically. And all we need to do is click on the analog device and click command G. And just stick with me, it looks a little intimidating at first, but I really promise it simplifies everything. So instrument rack means we now have those macros. And we can map things to the macros and close this part because it's really distracting from what's really important. And what we do now is we right click on frequency, map it to macro 1, right click on resonance, map it to macro 2, and we also map our envelope to the macros, but maybe the, the lower row because we perfectly have four macros here. So we right click on attack, map it to macro 5, then for the decay, macro 6, sustain, macro 7, and release, macro 8. And we also map the release of the amplitude envelope to the same release here because we want this value to be the same for both envelopes. So also mapping the release of the amplitude envelope to macro 8. And now we can close the analog window, just focus on those now six knobs and for demonstration purposes I just programmed some MIDI clip with one static note. So you can see what happens because I really like to narrow down the focus on a few parameters instead of seeing like a million knobs at the same time. So now when we press play we have this open but already kind of full sound. And now we can bring down the filter you see in the beginning we have this movement, usually resonance, adds some character, and if you increase the decay you have a longer accent in the beginning, and if you increase the sustain it doesn't go all the way down, and here we would be all the way at the top again, so it's basically like opening the filter fully. And if you choose some slower attack, you get those nice swells. Now those are the very basics and you can spend so much time already exploring those different knobs. Nevertheless, there are a few small settings that you can add that still lift your sound quite a bit that I want to share with you. Particularly for the filter, because if you click on the filter setting you can choose different drive modes. For example, I like Sim 2 in this case, it just gives a little more extra fullness to the sound. I also always like to add some keyboard tracking, meaning that if you play higher notes the filter slightly opens more, which is a very musical reaction to the playing. Then this value here for the envelope means how intense the envelope is. So if this is all the way to the bottom, it's quite dull. And if you increase it, you can get a lot of filter reaction, even if your filter is all the way down. Which is actually nice for really punchy sounds and 
eventually even some consideration to map this to one of those macros as well. We can also make those instrument rack look more inspiring by right clicking on one part and just choosing a color and this way make this whole device look really friendly and inspiring. I absolutely like colors a lot and I think it's some super amazing thing to use it in this way. Also you can change the names of course. Also some amazing setting is that if you click this macro preset icon you can save things. So for example if you click new you can call it default and just save this one and then create another one and maybe call it like a long version where you have some very long decay, some bit of sustain and a long release and again click this icon and save it. And this way basically create your own instrument and save your little presets. I absolutely love this function. If you're interested in having a very useful and musical collection of 45 of those types of racks containing more than 200 different presets, be warmly invited to check out this little synth collection here that I created for Ableton Live synthesizers or otherwise check out this playlist for some more input on sound design. Apart from that, I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.